more than anything else. Amen. Because I really can't bless a person. Amen. I'm not God. But yeah, yeah, so Mary, Mary, Mary was told by the angel Gabriel that she was going to have something supernaturally happen to her. Because God has, had looked upon her and chose her to be the one that he was going to allow his son, uh, uh, the son of God, Jesus Christ, to come into this world. And then Mary said, well, you know, I understand what you're trying to tell me, sir, but understand this. I'm still isogeating, y'all. I, I understand this. I am a young woman. I am a, a teenager, as a matter of fact. I, you know, we don't like to tell our ages, but I am a teenager. And I am a spouse or betrothed to a man by the name of Joseph. In all essence, we really are married, but according to our custom, we have yet to consummate that marriage. So I'm yet still a virgin. And then, yeah, and I know, and I know that uh, when, when what you're talking about, that can happen if I have known a man. And I'm saying is that I have not had sex yet. So how can it be that I'm going to bring forth a child into this world without knowing and having sex with a man? Angel Gabriel says, fear not, don't worry about what I've told you, Mary, because what's going to happen to you is going to come up, is going to happen by way of the Holy Ghost. It's going to be supernatural. And you shall conceive this child without any interaction with a man. And then that you shall, he shall be born and his name shall be Jesus and he shall be the savior of the world. And then she says, be it as you say. Uh, be it as you say, I'm the handmaiden of the Lord. Amen. But but that, that was Mary. She knew some things, y'all. But but she was young, when, uh, and, and sometimes she had to ponder some things. And so it is with us sometimes, you know. We think we know. We think we know. People think they know us. But, but I was one that, uh, when I was growing up, like I said, I was very introverted and shy. And I kept to myself. And, I, and one of the things that I did, like I said, I was an observer. I watched things. I watched people. I observed things. And I noted things internally. And sometimes the way that I, well, generally the way that I would express is when I had occasion to is when I was in school. When I was in school, we did book reports and essays. I love to do book reports and essays. I found out that I had the ability to write and write in such a way it just amazed people and me. I did not know that it was a gift from God, that I was being blessed by Him. But I came to find that out uh, once I got saved. Amen. So, yeah, yeah, uh, I was very quiet and introverted. And, and, and again, uh, 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 I had the ability to, I had another thing that, that God had gifted me with. I had the ability to be in the presence of people and how I interact with them. It didn't take a long period of time. Uh, I used to tell them that I would know them. Of course, they did. They thought that was kind of crazy. They said, how you going to know me? You all, We ain't been together but a few, uh, a little bit of time. Well, it was this gift that God gave me. And according to my family down home in the Delta in Mississippi, uh, they called it that I had the ability to read people. And that's what it was. But uh, uh, I, as I got saved, I, I, I believe it to be, and I know it to be, discernment. And God has given me a great gift of discernment. But even in that, and even in that, Nobody, and not even myself, even if I can know somebody and I can know know about them, but nobody knows us like God. And why is that so? Well, let's go to the psalm. Let's go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Lord God, help a brother out. Let's go to Psalm 139. Amen. And you'll find these words recorded in that first verse. The reason why God knows us better than anybody else. Oh, Lord, you have searched me thoroughly. And have known me. And, and, and I like what the word of God says. You have searched me thoroughly. Because generally speaking, how people get to know people, we don't do a thorough search of, 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 a, of a person. No, we don't. Generally, what some people do, and most people I say, uh, in, in, their, in, the, in the process that they use to know you, they get to know you or they try to know you or they believe they know you based upon the things that they see. The thing that they are able to uh, observe that they can see, visibly see. And what am I saying? Man looks at the outward parts, but God looks at the inward parts. So therefore, what I'm saying is, is that we don't do a thorough search of people when we're trying to know them. Uh-huh. Unless you have some sort of special gift. 
And that's what God has allowed me to do because I don't, I never believed in looking at somebody from the surface and making a surface decision about who that person was. Because there was always something much, much more than what you could see that would tell you about who that person is. Amen. As a matter of fact, even there's something that even when you're in communication with someone, amen, I, I'm, I'm, I thank God that he has allowed me to be a communicator and understand what communication is. Communication is not just my and you being able to talk and talk in an eloquent manner. No, it is not. The key to communication is, is being able to listen. Because let me tell you, sometimes, well, no, not sometimes, uh, most times... When, when a person is communicating with you, they're talking with you, you can not only pick up what you can uh, about them from what you hear what they say, but you can pick up things about them from what they don't say. Lord have mercy. Uh, and that takes, a, that takes an attentive ear to be able to do that. That takes a, uh, the discernment of the Holy Ghost to help you to be able to do that. And I thank God that that's something that he has blessed me with because I've been able to just uh, uh, not only just take into account what I've heard, but also the things that I don't hear. Amen. So, but God, y'all, he has searched us thoroughly and he has known us. Uh, good morning, uh, young Kevin Johnson, sir, cousin Johnson, uh, cousin Kevin. And then he says this, uh, Psalm 139 is where we are, and the title is, God Knows Us. Uh, nobody, oh yeah, the, the, the title is, Nobody Knows Us Like God. Amen. And the second verse, you know my down sitting in my uprising. You understand my thought afar off. That's somebody that knows you. If somebody knows you're down sitting in uprising, they have taken time. Well, no, they got some... They got a lot of information about us, and that information is not cannot come from a casual relationship. Amen. No, it cannot. And here's a sidebar uh, uh, for us. Amen. This, so it is with our relationship with God. You will not know who Jesus is just by having a casual relationship with him. You need to take the time to want to really know him. And the Bible lets me know that when you do that, the Bible says that he rewards those who diligently seek after him. Amen. For when you draw near unto God, he draws near unto you. So that cannot happen unless you're really trying to get to know him. Oh, my God, nobody knows us like God. Uh, uh, and why is that? You sit and search out my path. <laughs> oh, my, am I lying down? And you are acquainted with all my ways. That's what the word of God says. The word of God also says that the very hairs on our head are numbered by him. If the hairs on our head are numbered by him, you better believe that he's going to know us in a, in a way that we ain't, gonna, we ain't accustomed to being known by. How many people would take time, would anybody take time to, to number the hairs on somebody's head? Lord have mercy. That's a loving and personal God. Amen. You have beset me and shut me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. That's right. That's what God has to do. And he has, sometimes he has beset me and shut me in. Amen. Uh, because why? Because he has to get us to a place, y'all. God has to get us to a place where we can get to know him. And, and what sometimes what he has to do, he has to get you away and separate you. Amen. And separate you so that you can become consecrated, sanctified unto him. You know what happened to Abram from the land of Ur and the Chaldeans? God told him, come ye from among your kindreds and I will make you, for I will make you the father of many nations. Abram left his, Abram left his family except for one that got attached to him a lot. But he came out. And he, and he obeyed God. Now understand this. When God called Abram, Abram was a pagan worshiper from, that, from where he was. And God, yeah, he was a pagan worshiper because that's what they did in Ur, the land of Ur, the Chaldeans. Amen. But, but something, there's something that happens when, when you have, when you hear the voice of God speaking to you. Amen. It has a way to just uh, 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 impact you in such a way that it will change that, that mindset that you had, that you may have had before. A a Abram was a pagan worshiper. He didn't really know nothing about God, and he didn't have the type of uh, 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 
process to go through that you and I do that allows us to know God. Amen. He didn't have that. He didn't have the ability to be born again and then have the dwelling of the Holy Ghost to come upon us when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. He did not have that. But he just followed what God had told him to do. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. If only we could follow what God tells us to do. But that's all right. That's all right. Nobody knows us like God, and he knows how to speak to us. Your infinite knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high above me. I cannot reach it. That's absolutely right. How do we know that so? Well, let's go to Isaiah, the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Amen. And we're going to go to verse uh, 8, I believe. Isaiah 55 and verse 8. You're going to find these words. Amen. And I'm in the Amplified Bible. Again, it says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. Uh -huh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And he tries to make this, he, God is a God that wants to illustrate. God is a God that, and this is how, why he nobody knows us like God does. He knows we he need to have certain kind of illustration, amen, for us to really believe uh, uh, what God says to us and how he speaks to us. So what does God tell us? How does he show us? How does he try to get us to understand when he says that my thoughts and my ways are not your ways? Amen. Uh, 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 and yeah. And then he says this. For the for the heavens are higher than the earth. Yeah, my thoughts are your, Yeah. Uh, my thoughts are... Uh, let me sort of go over this again, Arthur. Verse 8. My thoughts are not your ways, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your, than your thoughts. And here's the illustration that God gives to help our understanding. For as the rain and snow come down from the heavens, we know they do, and return not there again. Once it comes down, it does not go back up. It falls to the ground. But water the earth, there we go. And make it bring forth and sprout. It saturates the earth. It makes the earth fertile. And then what it happened? That it may give seed to the sword. That's exactly what it does. And bread to the eater. Eventually, when the seed is planted in the ground, it, it begins to grow. And then what grows from there, the produce that comes from there, we're able to eat. That's what God wants us to understand. Amen. Amen. That, uh, oh my God, oh my God, because when you focus in on God and, and, and you understand about his thoughts and his ways being higher than, than, than the heavens and, and higher than, than, than anything that we can imagine, amen, and that when he sends his word down, Lord have mercy, when he sends his word down upon us, amen, it will absolutely saturate us, oh my God, and when it saturate us, and we receive his word, and we feed off of his word, guess what will happen, we will grow, Jesus Christ told that devil, uh, Satan, when he was in the, uh, in the wilderness, after the uh, Holy Ghost had led him out into the wilderness, after he was baptized by John the Baptist at the River Jordan, that he led him into the wilderness to be tried and tempted of the devil. Uh, while he fasted 40 days and 40 nights, the devil stepped to him on the very first occasion that he had, when he saw that he believed that he had Jesus at his weak moment. Uh, uh, he was the Son of God, but he came down here in, in human form, y'all, as a slave, as a servant, and he was a man, so in his humanity, 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, uh, he might have been a little hungry, y'all. So the, so the devil said, Satan said, if you be the son of God, why don't you take these stones and turn them into bread? Satan, and Jesus Christ said to him, Satan, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed from the mouth of God. That's right. Because when we eat from the mouth of God, the word of God, it is absolutely assured that you will grow. Amen. Amen. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. All right. I'm starting to feel my help, y'all. Feeling my help. Where could I go from your spirit? Or where could I flee from your presence? If I ascend up in the heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, the place of the dead, behold, you are there. Now that was something that the God was wanting us to understand. And the reason why the scripture reads the way it reads, amen. Because many of us do not understand that Jesus Christ, God, 
is, is God over everything. The Bible says that he's Lord of Lords and King of Kings. He's sovereign over everything. Everything comes under subjection to him. For he reigns from heaven above. But not only in heaven, he reigns in Sheol. What? I thought the devil was large and in charge down there. You thought wrong. Uh-huh. You didn't know. God, see, that's the thing, y'all. That's what we do when we be thinking. Nobody knows us like God, but because what you... you